Hey, what's up guys? Hope everyone's doing really, really well. Going to be a casual, relaxed, hangout kind of webcast this week. It's going to be a little technical, so if you're not in the mood for anything technical, you can leave. But we're going to talk through some numbers. Specifically, this idea of, or this title, Numbers Everyone Should Know from Jeff Dean. So, uh, Fred, I just learned about this guy. So apparently, Jeff Dean is like... Um, this super famous Google fellow person. Um, he's been at Google since the 90s and he's like a fellow, which pretty much means he's insanely smart and, and has probably designed like most of Google as you know it. This is like a PowerPoint he gave about software engineering advice from building large scale distributed systems. So if you get a chance, you should definitely check out his presentation. He talks about some good stuff. But one point that he made that kind of resonated with everyone and now this little thing this little title or phrase is coined by his name or coined by him numbers everyone should know and a lot of people refer to this but he pretty much gives this cheat sheet of how long things take and it's all relative to each other but when you see them all side by side you can kind of get a feeling of like how crazy it is like you know in like elementary school when they put the planets next to each other then the solar system next to the planets and then the milky way or whatever it's kind of like that so it's just insane orders of magnitude of how long stuff takes and that's what we're going to talk about so first thing is numbers let's just look at these numbers you don't have to know what all this stuff on the left means we'll talk through some of them but some of them but the first thing to notice is just take a look at the raw numbers. NS is nanoseconds. So there's a billion nanoseconds in a second, and the list just goes fastest to slowest. So just look on the right. Don't look on the left yet. It just goes fastest to slowest. Uh, L1 cache reference is 0.5 nanoseconds. And then this thing, sending a packet from California to the Netherlands to California, essentially around the world, that takes 150 million nanoseconds or 150 milliseconds. So just to give everyone a perspective of this a little bit more, if you imagine this is one second, just imagine this is one second. Let's see how long this is. So let's just do that real quick. But um, imagine this NS instead of an NS, it's just seconds. So we have 150 million, is that 150 million? Uh, seconds there's 60 seconds in a minute there's 60 minutes in an hour and then there's 24 hours in a day so that's how many days it is so if this top thing was a second that would take a hundred one thousand seven hundred thirty six days and what is that that's like 4.7 years so that's just to get a sense of the magnitude of the scale okay everything has increasing orders of magnitude which makes it even crazy so when this if this were one second this would be almost five years okay so that's just a sense of what we're dealing with here so let's just talk about the first one first and we'll talk all the way through most of these important ones we won't talk about every single one all right let's talk about this first one real quick l1 cache reference it sounds really complicated but we'll break it down so pretty much what we the only thing this first line means is L1 cache reference takes one nanosecond or half a nanosecond. So first, let's just get some context. When you go to Best Buy and you buy a processor, it's like one gigahertz, right? So what does one gigahertz actually mean? One gigahertz, that's a measure of frequency. And that means your processor runs at a billion cycles per second. A gigahertz is a billion. Just trust me on that. But so most processors run the order on the order of billions of cycles per second. And if you do the reverse math of that, it's roughly a nanosecond per cycle. So billions of cycles per second is roughly a nanosecond per cycle. So in other words, what this is really saying is if an L1 cache reference takes about you know, one nanosecond to get done, that pretty much means it can get done in one clock cycle. And that's literally the fastest, that is the fastest a computer can operate in one cycle. That, that's as low as it gets. You can't operate in half a cycle. If you can finish something in one cycle, that is the fastest possible thing known to, known to computing. So 
So what does this mean? Let's just like actually what does this mean? It, it's not really, it's a little cryptic, but we can break it down. So let's just take a look at some processors. So I got some pictures here. This is like a fancy A7 Apple processor. You know, I think you guys have seen it. It's those little black squares you put on your motherboards or you see in the phones when you break them out. But this is the A7 processor. This is already really old. Uh, there's already A8, A9. I'm just using it as an example. But I'm sure everyone has seen those little squares before. And they're also called dies. So what's inside this black, what's inside this black thing? So what's inside this black thing is um, a system. It's actually this red thing. So this red box is this black thing. So just associate that too. But what you're seeing here is actually all the transistors, all the metal laid out. And it's just covered by this nice plastic thing. But inside, it's this. So what L1 cache reference means, it means how long does it take the CPU to access the L1 memory, which is right here. So you can see there's two L1 memories here. There's probably actually a dual core CPU going on here and they both have an L1 cache and they both share an L2 cache. But this first line that we were just looking at, L1 cache reference is how long the CPU takes one cycle, remember, how long the CPU takes to access L1. So it's literally this. This little distance where electricity is going through this little distance, that takes about a nanosecond. So that's just to give you a sense of how long things take. And when you're acting on this level, when things are so close together, this is when distance actually makes a difference. So see how the L2 is a little further away from the CPU than L1? That means the CPU to access L2 memory, it's gonna take longer for the CPU because it's physically a little further away than L1. And line three here, you can see how L2 cache reference is seven nanoseconds. So that's about 14 times slower than L1 cache reference. But you know, when you break it down on this level, like the metal level, it's literally just the distance, right? It's just the distance away from the CPU. So this big red block is the A7, and this is like the, you know, sexy marketing picture of an A7, but here's something which is a little more concrete. This is actually the diagram of the um, actual hardware. If you opened up an iPhone, you would see this. So you can see the A7 thing is right here. Uh, I don't know why it's gray and other pictures black, but pretty much that's the A7, and there's a bunch of other components on this thing. So let's take a look at this second bullet. So this second bullet is Alpida, whatever, whatever, LPDDR3 SD RAM. So pretty much that turquoise color or that greenish color, that is your main memory. And this one, in this iPhone, it's Alpida um, SD RAM. And I think this version of the iPhone had a gig of this. So this is your main memory right here, all right? And that's really important because also our processor accesses main memory very often. Like it's going from this A7 thing to the Alpida RAM very, very often. So that's important because main memory access is also a very important thing that we want to time. So a main memory reference, how long that takes is going to be 100 nanoseconds. So this is already 100 times slower than an L1 cache reference. But this is if you want to access main memory or read data from main memory, this is going to be how long it takes. And what exactly is main memory? Well, main memory, it's not that crazy. Main memory is literally the processor inside that A7 accessing this RAM over here, all right? So just to give you a sense, and even with everything, when you measure this, it's literally just distance because remember, when we were back on the processor, look how close these two things are, CPU to L1. But now if you wanna go CPU to main memory, which is also a very common task, you gotta go CPU, you gotta to go to this main memory interface once you hit that interface, then you're gonna go over to this green block and then you can read main memory. And all that stuff, that whole thing, that's gonna take 100 nanoseconds just to reference it. But if you actually wanna read it, it definitely takes a little longer. So that's the next level of how long things take. If you're over here, this is almost instantaneous. The next level, 
is going to be reading from processor to memory. And this is what it like physically looks like. All right, so we talked a little bit about memory. And you can see how these first th these first three things are processor related. Then we get into how we reference memory. And referencing memory is also very, very fast. But the next thing that I'm sure everyone knows about, but accessing memory is fast and accessing disk is really, really slow. So you can see how the disk stuff, these three lines, like read one megabyte sequentially from disk. That's going to take 30 milliseconds. And the computer time, that's already really, really slow. We're already getting to like the years, like we're already at the bottom. So reading anything from disk is really, really slow. And what does that look like physically? But we can break that down too. So if we go back to this diagram, do you see this third one here? Uh, Toshiba, whatever, 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 128 gigabytes, NAND flash. But this is a cell phone, so it's using uh, NAND. Uh, flash memory, which is faster than a normal spinning hard drive, but it's still, in the sense of our, our word, it's going to be disk. So this thing, this brown box, that's going to be the disk, so to speak, for this system. And it's you can see how it's even farther away from the processor, and this is actually very, very slow to access. And the general rule of thumb is the bigger the memory gets, the slower it is to access. And the smaller the memory is, the faster it is to access. So getting from this A7 pink thing all the way over to this Toshiba thing in the brown, that's going to take a really, really long time. And that's what they're saying here, that disk seeking and reading stuff from disk, this takes so long. Just remember our analogy, this up here, that's seconds. If this were seconds, this stuff down here is going to be years. So it's, it takes crazy long in computer time. So everything we talked about was for one little computer, like all the stuff we talked about here, that's just on inside one iPhone, right? All these other number here, they're actually referring to network stuff. Actually, when we send data over the internet, like sending one kilobyte over a gigabit network takes 10,000 nanoseconds or this one is actually really cool to think about. This is sending a packet from California to the Netherlands back to California and that takes 150 milliseconds. And we obviously this is really slow in computer time, but this is sending a packet around the world in 150, 150 milliseconds, which actually if you think about that in the real world, that's pretty crazy. This is actually kind of close to the speed of light. So Let's just take the speed of light. So the speed of light travels um, around the world 7.5 times in a second. So one second is 1,000 milliseconds. And if speed of light can travel in 7.5 times, that means it's going to take 133 milliseconds um, for the speed of light to go around the world one time. So honestly, 133 milliseconds to 150 milliseconds around the world, you can see like this is not quite the speed of light, but it's on the same order of magnitude as the speed of light. Like you're sending data across all these wires under the ocean, whatever, whatever, in 150 milliseconds. And it's slow in computer times, but still, this is really fast. This is like on the order of breaking into the speed of light. And to wrap this up, what I want to give everyone a context with is um, I was Googling this, but what is the average human response time? And the average human response time is 0.25 seconds. That's about 250 milliseconds. So I think for you or me, or for anyone that's not a gamer, you know, our response time is like 100 to 200 milliseconds. When things are lagging by like 200 milliseconds, we can probably notice. But if something's lagging only by 100 or 50 milliseconds, we can't really notice that at all. So even though this is so slow in computer times, it's almost the speed of light, the normal person would not even be able to detect 150 millisecond difference. So that's pretty crazy. Like that's the scale we're operating at when we go from computer land to the like real life land. And it's just a little wild to think about. Like these packets are almost traveling at the speed of light and still this is years and this stuff is seconds. So 
just food for thought, guys. But it's crazy stuff.